Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to very interesting gameplay during the very strong tournament in Nixie in 1983. How strong that tournament was? 11 out of 15 players were in the top 20 um, of the world. So uh, quite a strong tournament uh, and the tournament was held in the celebration of Svetozar Gligoric's 60th birthday. Uh, Svetozar was playing during this tournament and uh, who was Svetozar? Why so strong tournament was organized, you know, as the celebration of his birthday? Uh, he was actually the world champion slayer. He won against six world champions. Uh, Max Uwe, Mikhail Botfinik, Vasily Smyslov, Tigran Petrosian, Mikhail Tal and even Bobby Fischer. Uh, he couldn't beat Boris Spassky, he tried and also Anatoly Karpov and Gary Kasparov. He also so tried. So imagine Gary Kasparov became the world champion in 1985 uh, and Max Uwe in 1938. So quite a huge, you know, time gap. Uh, and Svetozar uh, Gligoric had a very nice personality, a lot of uh, players just like him. So a lot of them, of course, play, uh, came to, to, you know, celebrate his 60th birthday. Now, uh, some of these world champions were invited to that tournament. Boris Spassky came, uh, Tigran Petrosian, Mikhail Tal also came. The future world champion, Gary Kasparov, uh, came as well. Uh, Bobby Fischer wanted $30,000 for playing in this tournament so um, the organizer refused so he didn't play but we had you know uh, as I said a lot of uh, superstars Ben Larsen, Jan Tiemann, Yasser Seyrawan uh, he was 23 years old and so on and I would like to show you the game between Lajos Portis um, a very strong Hungarian um, grandmaster at that time he was 46 years old and in this tournament he got exec for with Boris Spassky third place so very strong, uh, you know, player among uh, very strong players. Uh, and his opponent is uh, going to be, of course, Gary Kasparov, uh, who is 20 years old. He's ranking 2690. And in this game, he's going to play as white. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Gary Kasparov opened with d4. Uh, we had knight f6, c4, e6, and now... If knight c3, then of course black can go for Nimzo Indian with the bishop b4. Uh, this is why sometimes white play knight f3. Uh, and now black can decide what to play. So d5 is possible, for example. Uh, but we have b6. So queen's Indian defense on the board. Now we have knight c3, bishop b7, and now a3. Uh, Petrosian variation, which was very much played by Gary Kasparov at the beginning of his career. Now, the idea is to play d5 in the next move. And this is a very strong idea because if black plays something like bishop e7, this is actually one of the variation, one of the lines which was played uh, in the past and it was played a couple of hundred times. However, believe me or not, after d5 um, and the castle and then e4, a white won uh, more than 60% of the game. So definitely this is really great to get this center as white. As you see, this pawn in, on e4 is defended and it cannot be, you know, taken by this bishop uh, because of this powerful uh, pawn center. So uh, this, how strong is that? This is why d5 was played uh, by Lajos Portis. Uh, and now we have c takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and e3 by Gary Kasparov. Knight takes on c3 and now b takes on c3. We have bishop e7 uh, and here bishop b5. Bishop b5, of course, the bishop not gonna stay on this diagonal, uh, but asking black, what you gonna do? Maybe you don't know the theory, but of course, these were the grandmasters, they know everything there. But how would you defend against this check? Because, for example, knight d7 would be terrible blunder because knight e5, this knight, of course, is pinned. Uh, how are you going to defend the, the knight? If you go for something like bishop c8, you're going to lose the queen. So that is the first trick here. Uh, and if you play something like c3, you're going to lose the pawn. So this is, you know, uh, one extra pawn and very solid center, you know, uh, and white going to have very comfortable game. So definitely knight d7 would be 
be very bad. Also, knight c6, the same caliber, a huge mistake. Queen a4 and knight e5 is coming and black gonna lose the piece. Bishop c6 would be slightly better, but still huge inaccuracy as the pawn on c5 is behind and black would like to play c5. So first have to move the knight, for example, to a5 or remaneuver this way. That's a lot of moves and white gonna, you know, uh, castle and gonna take the, the center and uh, have very comfortable game. Uh, so this is why we had a c6, the only move in this position and now bishop d3. Uh, we have c5. Now, bishop b5 is not that great because after a bishop c6, black gonna take the, the bishop and the pawn is on, already on c5, so there is, there is no problem here. So this is why Garry Kasparov uh, play castle uh, and now we have knight c6 developing move, bishop b2 uh, and now rook c8. We have queen e2, we have castle by black and now rook a to d1 and queen c7 just moving the queen out of the of this x-ray as if white decide for example to open the diagonal there are some tricks on h7 with the attack on the queen so you know and that's queen c7 is very safe move and now if you remember, a couple of days ago, I show you the game between Vichy Anand and Jan Krzysztof Duda. It was played a couple of days ago. If you don't remember, check it out. However, it was exactly the same pawn structure, not the same position, uh, because it was played, you know, uh, after the Nimzo Indian defense. However, we had the same pawn structure and this bishop on b2 by Jan Krzysztof Duda. And Vichy Anand had um, these pawns. Uh, and also what he achieved, he actually pushed this pawn uh, on c4. Uh, it was not the same pawn structure, however, it completely locked the, this bishop. So Jan Krzysztof Duda had the problems uh, because uh, this bishop was watching at this pawn. So it was completely bad piece and he needed a couple of moves actually to improve the position of the pieces. However, here Garry Kasparov doesn't want to wait for, for any, for example, I don't know, uh, knight a5 and, and, and c4 moves uh, with the support of the, of the rook and the, and the queen. So he played c4 first. And now he want to open the diagonal for this bishop and this bishop also can be very, very dangerous. Now, knight a5 could be played in this position. However, white, of course, want to play d5 uh, to open the diagonal. So e takes on d5, c takes on d5. Um, and for example, after bishop e4, this pawn can be very strong here. And also look at these bishops. This bishop can, for example, jump to e5, attack the queen. This bishop also can attack, for example, the, the, the rook uh, and so on. And still, you know, they keep an eye on the position of the king. Very dangerous position. Uh, this is why Lajos Portis play C takes on D4. We have E takes on D4. So Gary Kasparov gonna play with this hanging pawns. Now, this is quite tricky because hanging pawns uh, usually are very, very vulnerable. Uh, so we have knight A5 now attacking the pawn three times. Uh, and here, actually, Garry Kasparov doesn't care. He wants to open the diagonals. He wants to have the initiative for his bishop and attacking chances. Knight c4, however, would be would be huge mistake because after knight c4, uh, yes, black got the pawn, but it, the position is completely lost. Queen e4 with the idea of checkmating. That's the that's the very strong uh, you know threat. So g6 is 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 has to be played and only now bishop c4 and after queen c4 queen e5 and now we have another mating idea. So black would have to play f6 but then queen e6 getting back back the pawn and this pawn gonna be extremely strong here. So, for example, rook f7 and now rook c1 attacking the queen and the queen would like to, you know, watch at the c8 uh, because the queen is attacking there and the, the, the rook is attacking there. So uh, queen a6 and then d6 is possible um, and white has a huge advantage here and, and very comfortable and attacking game. So knight c4 is uh, very, very risky. This is why we have e takes on d5, c takes on d5, bishop d5. Looks like actually black won the pawn, however, very temporarily because now we have bishop h7 getting the pawn back, king h7 and rook d5. 
And now the position is very tricky. Black probably would like to play, for example, rook h8. You know, bring the king uh, to g8 and have the attack on h2. Uh, it would be pretty dangerous. However, after rook e1, you have to do something with the bishop. So let's say bishop d6, improving the position of the pieces, but then rook h5. Uh, and after king g8, just exchange, you know, the rooks, this dangerous rook. And after knight g5, uh, white actually has a checkmate on, on e8, another checkmate on h5, and you cannot defend that. You can deliver one check, but what now? You're gonna get checkmated. This is actually, you know, forced checkmate. So that's of course not possible and if black tries for example to exchange the queens maybe this way uh, keeping the queen on this diagonal and uh, then still is losing queen e5 there is another diagonal to attack with the checkmate idea bishop f6 would be forced and then queen h5 king g8 and just exchange the bishops and the position of the king is completely um you know vulnerable the knight gonna jump to h4 uh, and white gonna deliver the checkmate in couple of moves so that's actually impossible to play this is why we have king g8 immediately uh, and now gary kasparov sacrificed the bishop boom bishop g7 and now of course black has to take the bishop uh, otherwise the bishop gonna you know go back to e1 or h6 the queen gonna join the game uh, and that's gonna be the disaster the the king without the protection so uh, king g7 and now another very strong move knight e5 so white are down the piece however look at this knight this knight is far far away from the action so not gonna help in the defense uh, and also how to stop for example uh, you know queen g4 queen g4 is coming and um, then rook d3 and that would be a checkmate on the on the g and h file so it's very dangerous position also um you know the rook can come for example to d7 uh, attack the bishop attack the queen it's uh, another threat so how to defend we have rook f to d8 so protecting d7 forcing to to exchange the rooks uh, and also making a space for the for the king so gary kasparov has to exchange the rooks but he doesn't like to do it so first he play queen g4 with check king f8 and now queen f5 threatening the checkmate so black doesn't have time to pick up the rook now uh, how to defend bishop d6 would not work because okay uh, queen defends um, f7 and for example something like knight g6 doesn't work knight g6 it looks very strong however the king can escape to g7 and now you are in troubles okay uh, this battery works on h2 uh, the knight is under attack and once the knight is moved then of course the rook gonna come to h8 and this is very dangerous position so a uh, white would have to play something like knight e5 and after exchanging then rook d6 and black is winning with extra knight this is enough to win this rook gonna defend the position so there is no problem however after bishop d6 uh, queen f6 is extremely strong and now this is the different story because the queen controls g7 uh, so completely different a different story so for example if you want to bring the, the knight to c6 that is losing because knight g6 and if you move the king here you're gonna have a checkmate on h8 um, and if you go to king e8 then this rook gonna come to the game rook e1 and now knight e7 of course is losing because rook d6 and look at this very beautiful checkmate queen d6 queen e7 and after queen e7 rook e7 this actually is a checkmate pretty beautiful um checkmate with the only knight and the rook so that's not even possible knight e5 also doesn't work because simply knight e5 uh, and uh, black even cannot take it because that would be the checkmate with you know these three pieces so not even possible queen e7 also doesn't work because queen h8 with check and then king has nowhere to go so queen f8 knight g6 uh, with the discovered check and attack on the queen so white is winning so after queen f6 bishop 
e5 would have to be played but then after rook e5 how you gonna defend uh, from the checkmate this is the checkmate in one move the only move defending actually is queen e5 sacrificing the queen however white has of course a completely winning position so bishop d6 is not possible because queen f6 very strong move and white gonna win the game so this is why we have f6 another defensive move this is much better but now knight d7 by Garry Kasparov what a beautiful sequence of move this knight jumped to e5 then queen g4 queen f5 and now this knight jumps to d7 this is just beautiful now how to continue you cannot move the king you have to move the king but where to move if you move king f7 then queen h7 and wherever you go if king e8 uh, then you're gonna get believe me or not but queen h5 this is a checkmate this is a checkmate because knight covers f8 uh, and the knight is defended so this is beautiful checkmate so it's not even possible uh, king e6 uh, could be played but then rook e1 um, and after king d5 you're gonna have a queen e4 with check king d6 and now rook d1 again this is a checkmate as this knight is defended and also is covering for example c5 um, and the queen covers the rest of the squares around so very nice uh, checkmate uh, queen e5 would have to be played but of course this is losing knight e5 uh, rook d5 and now knight g6 with check and after let's say king d7 uh, queen e7 and of course this is completely winning for white uh, with extra queen for the for the rook that's of course enough uh, for winning as well so uh, king f7 is not possible how about a uh, king g7 now uh, queen h7 is not possible however rook e7 just you know to eliminate the defender of f6 so if if black for example want to defend then of course we have rook e7 rook e7 and this actually is a checkmate king g8 rook g5 uh and uh, black doesn't have much squares and um, that's of course is a checkmate so um, not possible to move the king this is why uh in this position rook d7 is the only move uh, and now we have rook d7 kicking the queen and now extremely sneaky move by Lajos Portis. Queen c5 asking to exchange the queens. White of course uh, can't exchange the queens because that would be, you know, losing position with the, with the two pieces for the rook. Uh, so we have queen h7 by uh, Garry Kasparov. But how to continue? Now we have rook c7, uh, another tricky move. Uh, and now how to play as white? your rook is forced to being exchanged and now the trick is that you cannot just move the rook because if you move the rook rook to d3 then black gonna win this game can you believe that uh, actually you can try to pause the video and find the winning continuation for black while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so how to defend the position as black believe me or not but the only move is queen f2 boom that's just boom queen f2 and now the point is you cannot take with the rook because then you have rook c1 uh, and uh, then you're gonna get checkmated and you cannot stop that so you would be checkmated you have to take with the king uh, but then you have bishop c5 with check uh, and black gonna get back the the queen and after let's say rook f6 king e7 rook f4 uh, then black gonna take this pawn as well uh, and two pieces against the rook it should be maybe not winning however definitely not losing for for black so black would fight for the win in this position so a very tricky move you know this queen c5 and then this rook c7 very sneaky moves by Lajos Portis uh, however we have queen h8 so Garry Kasparov anticipate that okay this looked really really scary so first queen h8 kicking the the king moving the queen from uh from the seventh rank we have king f7 and only now rook d3 
So you see how crazy is that position. Now we have knight c4, so bringing the knight to defense because this knight is far, far away. So it would be nice, for example, to, to bring the knight to e5. And Gary, believe me or not, play rook f to d1, inviting Lajos actually uh, to fork the, the rooks. However, this actually is a little trap here. Uh, you cannot play knight b2. You cannot play knight b2 because queen h7 and that's completely trap you cannot play for example king f8 that would be uh, rook d8 and this is a checkmate so you cannot play that uh, also king e8 doesn't uh, solve any problem because now we have queen g8 and after bishop f8 uh, we have queen e6 and how you're gonna defend you cannot defend you get the checkmate in the next move with the rook on d8 and it doesn't matter how you um, defend this check uh, king e6 would be uh, slightly better, but after rook e1, your king is in the in the lost position. Queen e5, this is the only move, but now queen g8 with check, uh, king f5, rook f3 check, uh, queen f4, and now can you find the checkmate in one? Boom, g4, beautiful checkmate, so that would be a uh, disaster. So it cannot be played, you cannot go for the for the rook. Um, this is why we have knight e5, and now this knight actually controls, you know, a couple of light squares around and also attack the rook. Uh, but Gary now play queen h7, we have king e6, uh, we have queen g8, and now how to continue? So if Lajos, for example, play... Um, knight f7 that is the problem because now the position of the king is completely open so rook e1 again queen e5 king f5 could be played here but of course this is rook f3 this is a checkmate uh, so uh, queen e5 sacrificing the the queen and simply rook e5 uh, king e5 and now there is a checkmate so white for example cannot take the the knight that would be disaster that is a checkmate on the first rank so what would have to be played is queen g3 with check and after king e6 just pick up the rook and win the game so knight f7 is uh, losing so Lajos Portis set up another trap another trap and he has the very uh, interesting idea king f5 uh, we have g4, uh, you know, creating the mating net, king f4, we have rook d4 with check, king f3, and now you can actually pause the video one more time and find the winning continuation for white, which is pretty tricky, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So... If you found something like h4, h5, uh, okay, this is winning, but it's very, very slow way of winning. Uh, if you try something like g5, I have a bad news because this is losing move. Believe me or not, if you want to bring the queen uh, this way, some shortcut, uh, it's actually losing because of the weakness on the first rank. Queen d4 actually wins the rook. Uh, and black gonna, you know, be uh, up in material. Two minor pieces is enough to win. Of course, you cannot take the queen because you're gonna get checkmated as the king controls g2. That's a pretty nice trap by Lajos Portis. Uh, however, uh, after king f3, Gary Kasparov played the best move in the position. Boom, queen b3. Not easy to find because this queen actually has to go, you know, between all these pieces. So it looks like very sneaky move. Queen b3 is actually winning. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. King e2 is the only move. This would be the checkmate. So this is why queen c3 would have to be played. But still, queen d5 um, and uh, yeah, king e2 is forced. And now queen e4, queen e3. And this is um, checkmate again. So uh, this is why after queen b3, beautiful move, uh, Lajos Portis resigned. So this is another example of beautiful Gary Kasparov attack. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss another quality content, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.